Hello, I am Pastor Horace Doughty in Lexington, Virginia, and each Sunday I bring you a Bible meditation by way of YouTube, and I encourage you, subscribe to Horace Doughty, D-O-U-T-Y, YouTube, and also share these meditations with your friends and your family. I appreciate that. Today, Palm Sunday, the title of our meditation is A Day for High Hopes. Does Almighty God keep His promises? Earnest people have asked that embarrassing question for hundreds of years, and the answer depends on your basic attitude. If you limit God to your own narrow interpretation of promise-keeping, the answer will probably be no. It'll be yes only if you allow God to keep His promises in ways that you did not expect. It's the same with a parallel question, does God answer prayer? The answer will be yes only if you realize that your Creator has a multitude of different ways to answer prayer. On every hand, I see disappointment, people suffering doubt and despair because they could not recognize the answer when it came. The answer to prayer. Because it looked different from what they expected. God made a clear promise. He said, I will be your God and you will be my people. I am your refuge and your strength. Really? Then tell me why. The Apostle Paul, after giving all to the cause of Christ, ends up moldering and dying in a chilly Roman prison. Why? Or Simon Peter, the big disciple, after finding his courage and then preaching powerfully, was ultimately rewarded by being crucified upside down. Where's God? Why doesn't he do something? Where's the promise? The Old Testament is long and fascinating history of this very problem, the glowing promise of God versus the letdown when the fulfillment failed to be what was expected. For example, God sent that miraculous manna from heaven to sustain His people during their long exodus out of Egypt. It got tiresome, that manna, not nearly so tasty as the leeks and the garlic that those Hebrews had learned to love while they were slaves. The promised land of milk and honey was not quite what they expected. Worse, that land was overrun and plundered. Fine Jewish princes were blinded and led into exile along with their proud tribesmen. The land to this day is fought over by Arabs and Israelis and Palestinians. Where is the promise of God? And then there comes the promise of a, of a Messiah, God's own emissary, who will establish once and for all a new kingdom and a new age. On Palm Sunday, he did come. The crowds welcomed Jesus as king. But by Friday morning, the bubble had burst. Those same people were screaming for his blood. Why? The actions and the attitudes of Jesus did not match their expectation of what was going to happen. They could not recognize fulfillment when it came. For most Jews, the picture remains unchanged to this day. After 2,000 years, they still wait for a Messiah King matching their self-designed notions. And if this Poor rabbi, Jesus, crowned with thorns, scourged by clumsy soldiers. If that's the fulfillment of God's promise, they will have none of it. And they shouted that day, His blood be on us and our children. We are their children. We are not so different. If Jesus demands that we take drastic steps to bring peace on earth, that's too much to ask. We don't want Him to do it all. And if abundant life means giving up our cherished self-advancement, our pursuit of wealth and power, then we will wait for a different Messiah. 
when Jesus persistently talks about a strange, unseen kingdom of heaven within us, that's too mystical. We prefer our basic notion of the real world, consisting of things we can see and touch and manipulate. So, most of us live out our lives settling for planet Earth when Jesus is offering a different dimension. His concept of reality is different from yours. And we think ours is better. We fit right in with those Palm Sunday pilgrims. Not confined to religion, we pledge allegiance to a nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for everybody. But if we are honest, we must say, with liberty and justice for me. I want my children sent to the best schools. Let those others worry about their slums and failing neighborhoods. And that pledge about my nation being undividable. Wait a minute. There should be divided lines between the producers, the beggars, between good people, between good and evil, because it makes sense. So the national vision fades. The promise can't be fulfilled. It's too different, too difficult, too costly. But let's return to that Jerusalem demonstration. We must admit our kinship with those shallow enthusiasts. Their disappointment embittered him in less than one week. Their Sunday, on that Sunday, they clamored to put Jesus on a, thro on a throne by Friday. They had nailed him to a cross. And yet, there is one vital difference between them and us. We have more information. We know about the resurrection of Jesus. We have watched his kingdom spread over the world. His followers have softened and tamed rustic civilizations, including our own. Churches and cathedrals dot our landscape. Vibrant art, inspiring music flow from that Christian kingdom. Hospitals, universities, food banks, serving both rich and poor, all in the name of this man, Jesus. The people in that Palm Sunday throng were religious people, but their vision was limited to their own notion. They wanted a king. God sent a savior. They could not even dream how much better was the fulfillment than their hopes. Their nation could have become the promised land, but they rejected Jesus. By whatever miracle, we are the fortunate ones, our ancestors, realize that Jesus was indeed the ruler that we need. And they founded a nation and declared independence in the name of God. Proof is on every scrap of money that you have in your possession. Printed and stamped, in God we trust. They meant it, and we made it our national motto. So, today, you are free to come to this little media talk. People around you love you and will come to your aid whenever you need it. You can bow your head and touch the hand of God. You can sense and welcome and make use of the kingdom of heaven, just as Jesus promised. And when you turn from the house of prayer, you can anticipate the pleasure of adequate food, shelter. You can enjoy this bright springtime, the garden, the blossoms, and the fun for you. Jesus has proven himself the king of glory. This Palm Sunday is indeed a day for high hopes. Amen. God bless you all.